What's up everybody, I'm Hoops and Hip Hop and we are back with another video and some more facts on the recently leaked Pokemon Gold and Silver Beta. Now when this news first dropped, even though I was really excited, I didn't really plan on making this many videos on it, but the first two videos I've made so far have done phenomenally well thanks to your guys' support, so I want to thank you guys so much for that, and on top of that, a decent amount of you have said that you've learned a lot of things about this from my videos specifically, so that really means a lot to me, and I thank you guys for mentioning that to me, and I decided I wanted to go ahead and bring some more interesting facts to you that you might have not known before. Now, I've done some digging, and I have found some decent facts that aren't talked about quite as much in the grand scheme of this big whole announcement and so hopefully you guys learned some things today there is actually a lot of interesting things here to cover even though we've already covered a lot so without further ado let's just jump right into it Okay, so the first thing we're going to kick off the video with is actually extremely, extremely interesting, and that's that several cities from Sinnoh, including Canalave, Snowpoint, and possibly even Celestic Town, were originally going to be in Johto. The reason we know this is because different map areas have been found in the beta of Gold and Silver for the rest of the game, and there are three different maps in particular that heavily, heavily resemble the cities from Sinnoh. As we can see right here, the city from the Gold and Silver beta in comparison to Canalave is practically identical, so there's no arguing it whatsoever that this is definitely the inspiration for Canalave, and if we look at the comparison with Snowpoint City, we can see the same thing, where this is definitely Snowpoint City, and this is definitely where the inspiration came from for Snowpoint City. The third one, which is Celestic Town, isn't quite as one-to-one, -one, but I thought it looked similar enough to bring up because it does have a similar layout in terms of the town, the houses, the shrine sort of thing being in the middle, so it's possible that this was an inspiration for Celestic Town as well. Now, whether or not these towns would have served the same purpose in Johto as they do in Sinnoh remains to be seen, but this actually lines up perfectly with other information that I've talked about in earlier videos because, as I mentioned earlier, Johto was originally planned planned to cover the whole rest of Japan during the time of this demo because these were planned to be the last Pokemon games. And of course, Sinnoh is based on another part of Japan, so it's very likely and possible that these two cities were going to be in a part of Johto that now is Sinnoh after further development, and could be based around very much the same areas in real life Japan. So it's absolutely fascinating to see that not only are Pokemon held back sometimes and reused at a later date, but even some of the towns have been held back and reused at a later date. It's absolutely fascinating stuff. Okay, so this next one I'm actually going to count as two different points just because we have got a bunch of Pokemon here that were originally planned to be a different type than they ended up being in the final game, so I'm going to go ahead and just list them all off and we're going to count this as two different points. So originally, Giraffe Rig was going to be a dark normal type instead of a psychic type, which is really interesting because I don't think we have a dark normal type. Ho-Oh was going to be a pure flying, which would have been the first pure flying. Sunflora was going to be a grass psychic, which would have made it much more interesting. Smoochum was going to be a pure ice type, Scizor was going to be a bug flying type, just like Scyther, Blossom was going to be a grass poison type, Umbreon was going to be a poison type as well, as I mentioned in the previous demo video, and Sneasel was going to be a pure dark type. Now, it's really interesting to see so many Pokemon have a completely different type than they were originally planned for, because naturally you feel like the typing of a Pokemon is one of the first things that is decided when its design is coming together. But obviously, with a Pokemon like Giraffe Rig being a completely different type than its final design came out to be, that is not the case and it just gives us even more amazing insight into the development of Pokemon designs and Pokemon games as a whole. Now the next thing on our list here is that Togepi actually didn't have an evolution in the Gold and Silver demo. Now this is really interesting considering Togepi is kind of like the mascot Pokemon for the concept of breeding and is meant to introduce players to this idea so the fact that it didn't evolve at this time is really interesting. Now, this is not to say that Togepi was originally planned to not even have an evolution, because it's very possible that at the time of the demo they just didn't have it made, but it's also interesting when you consider that Togepi is at a very late position in the Pokedex in the demo, being placed even after Pokemon like Ho-Oh and the Legendary Beasts. So, it's interesting to think about whether or not this actually had any implications for Togepi's role in the games, and whether or not it might have been a much more important Pokemon than one that is just simply in the middle of the Pokedex that was designed to introduce us to breeding. 
Next up, we have a number of Pokemon, including Politoed, Zatu, Espeon, and the cancelled branched evolution of Weepmel, who were meant to evolve from something known as the Heartstone. Now, this is interesting because obviously all of these Pokemon's evolution methods are completely different in the final game, and the Heartstone isn't even something that's even included in the final game, but what makes it even more interesting is that the Heartstone falls very much in line with the name of Pokemon Gold's remake, Pokemon Heart Gold. So it's interesting to think about whether or not maybe this item had some sort of bigger implication, and maybe it inspired the name of Pokemon Gold's remake. Okay, so this next one is definitely the weirdest of the bunch, but it's super interesting as well, and it's definitely worth noting. If we take a look at the Pokedex for the Gold and Silver beta, we come across a number of Pokemon who were never even used and were completely scrapped altogether, including this weird looking Pokemon that looks somewhat like a lion or a bear of some sort. However, this Pokemon is actually not unused at all because this is actually Porygon 2. Yes, according to the team that has uncovered the Gold and Silver beta and has started dissecting it, this was the original design for Porygon 2. Now, people have pointed out that this design looks a lot like the Pond de Leon, which is a mascot of a popular donut store chain in Japan, of all things, so I have no idea how this could have connected to Porygon. The only thing I can come up with is that the spheres around its head maybe could represent refined polygons that represent the advancement of Porygon's design as a 3D model and whatnot, but that is a very, very, very unlikely stretch. I think it's more likely that maybe Porygon 2 was planned to be in the game, but they didn't have an idea for its design quite yet, or they didn't have anything finalized, so they just kind of put this in as its placeholder design, more so as a joke maybe, because other than that explanation, I really have no idea why this thing looks so unbelievably different from Porygon and Porygon 2. Another interesting thing noted by one of the members of the research team of this demo is that Houndoom learns the move Bone Meringue at level 48. Now this is really interesting because Bone Meringue is currently an exclusive move to Cubone and Marowak, and no other Pokemon uses it, so the fact that Houndoom would have learned this definitely would have been a big deal. On top of that, Houndour and Houndoom were originally also planned to only be Fire-type and did not have the Dark-type incorporated, which is also really interesting considering they're so overtly kind of based on those hellhounds and obviously have very much of a dark type scheme to them. Following that up, we actually have the fact that Kanto was still going to be a part of this game even with all of the extra stuff added in. It was just going to be very condensed and squashed down into a very small, single map-sized area. If we take a look at this map of Kanto, you can definitely see it's Kanto because you can pick out things like Pallet Town and the Pokemon Tower, but as you can see here, it is very, very condensed and very, very watered down compared to its actual final version in the final version of Gold and Silver. Now, what What's interesting about this is that it's a well-known story that Game Freak wanted to include Kanto into Gold and Silver, but they had trouble doing so before Satoru Iwata stepped in, so maybe Game Freak's desire to actually have a fully-fledged Kanto in this game is part of the reason why they took this extra stuff out, because they couldn't really have both, and when it came down to it, they ultimately decided to go with a bigger Kanto instead of a smaller Kanto with all of these extra Johto areas. That little tidbit is just speculation, obviously, but it's still incredible to think about how different Pokemon Gold and Silver could have really been had one or two of these decisions gone the other way. Next, we have a tweet from another one of the members of the team that's researching this demo that there is actually no data whatsoever for Lugia in the demo. Now, this actually makes a lot of sense because if you got the chance to play the demo yourself, you would have seen that Lugia is not on the title screen even in Silver version. Ho-Oh is actually the Pokemon that's on the title screen in both games, and if we look at the Pokedex for the demo one more time, Lugia is nowhere to be found. There is this weird cat-looking creature that is in Lugia's place, but it doesn't resemble Lugia hardly at all other than being right next to Ho-Oh in the Pokedex, so it's very possible that Lugia was not made at the time of the creation of this demo, and this other weird cat Pokemon was in its place, but then when Lugia was created, this cat Pokemon was ultimately replaced by Lugia. And last, we have what is probably the most interesting thing in this entire video, and that's that Snubble, of all Pokemon, could have originally possibly been planned to be a legendary Pokemon at the time of this demo. Now, this isn't something that we can say for certain, because there is a bit of speculation and theorizing going on on my part, but based on the things we do know for certain about Snubble in this demo, it's reasonable to conclude that a lot more was planned for it than ultimately happened. 
Now, the first thing we can say for certain is that Snubble was planned to be a pure psychic type. Now, at the time of Generation 2, Snubble was only a pure normal type, so going from pure normal to pure psychic definitely would have been an upgrade, and as it pertains to being a legendary Pokemon, the psychic type is very substantial because, as we know in the earlier days of Pokemon, the psychic type was essentially known as the legendary type, and that is actually why Lugia is a psychic flying instead of a water flying, because psychic was seen by the developers themselves as sort of a legendary type, and this was stated by one of the developers themselves in an interview. So we definitely know that the psychic type at the time of Generation 2 has a lot of legendary aura surrounding it. Another very simple point to make that adds to this idea even further is that in this demo, Snubble does not have an evolution, which obviously contributes to the idea that it would be a legendary since most legendary Pokemon, even as of today, do not evolve whatsoever. And last but not least, and very similar to Togepi, Snubble is actually placed very late in the Pokedex in the demo for some reason, along with the rest of the legendary Pokemon like Ho-Oh and the legendary beasts. Now this definitely doesn't guarantee Snubble as a legendary because there are other odd Pokemon that seem out of place here, but considering this and considering all of the other facts and ideas we just talked about, it definitely seems like Snubble had a lot more going on for it during the time of this demo than it does in the final game, which is completely fascinating, but it also also really really sucks for Snubble at the same time, so if that is indeed the case, rest in peace Snubble, we still love you anyway. And there we have it everybody, those were 10 more facts about the leaked Pokemon Gold and Silver demo. I have had a ton of fun covering this on the channel, and it's been amazing to see how much you guys are enjoying the videos as well, so if you guys enjoyed this one, be sure to give the video a like, and let me know in the comments below what you thought about these particular ideas. Also, if you have any more ideas of note that you know about that I didn't mention, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for way more Pokemon content each and every week, it's been an amazing time on the channel these past few weeks. We're really growing really fast, and I really just want to thank you guys for that. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. If you guys would like to support the channel further, you can stream my music on any of the major music streaming slash purchasing platforms. You can contribute to my Patreon at just a dollar a month and get some sweet perks, or you can go to my merch store and pick something up. All of the links to all of that stuff is in the description and would be eternally appreciated if you decide to do that. With that being said though, I will be back with another video very soon. So until then, as always, I will smell you guys later.